Mr. Marchant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, Commissioner. Uh, as a congressman, our frontline people back home are our constituents. Right. And they do not hesitate to <laughs> share with us uh, the shortcomings and their concerns. And right now, they've lost confidence in the impartiality of the IRS. And uh, I don't know of any time in my career where they have been more vocal about that and uh, they're angry about it. So some of the questions I'll ask are questions that they're asking me. Uh, and can you say unequivocally at this time that there is no targeting going on in the IRS of any of these groups? I can tell you that, uh, and I ask that question myself somewhat regularly, that as far as I know, there is no targeting. And one of the things I hope to hear from frontline employees is if anybody out there thinks that they're being asked to do something they shouldn't be doing, they will let me know directly personally. They know how to reach me. But at this point, we are, I am every place I go, stressing that the IRS needs to be apolitical. It needs to be viewed as an agency with integrity and people should have trust in it. But ultimately, the proof will be in the pudding. We actually need to deliver on that uh, position. We need to assure people that when they hear from the IRS, it's not because of something they said or someplace they, uh, or a group they belong to. They hear from us because we have an inquiry about information they provided, and it's the same inquiry everybody else in that situation would get. And over time, people can listen to me and think if they believe me, nobody's challenged my integrity in the past, but ultimately the words won't do it. It is, in fact, we need to deliver with performance. People but in this committee, historically, members on both sides of the aisle have asked that very specific question and were not told the complete truth. So I appreciate your answer. Uh, if you discover this kind of activity, will there be immediate and swift action taken to, to bring that to this committee and relieve and fire employees for that kind of behavior? I have committed both uh, in the uh, Senate and to this committee as well that if there is a problem, uh, you'll be the first to hear about it, not the last. I think, uh, as I said, my, one of my reasons for traveling to 25 cities over the next few weeks, I've been to six, as I said, and I've got 19 to go, uh, is because I want to stress that message to employees. I want them to understand we don't shoot messengers. What I need to know is if somebody has a concern, if something's going on that shouldn't be going on, we need to know about it. We need to know about it and fix the problem quickly, and we need to be transparent about it. Uh, again, as I said, I don't look back in life. I've got enough problems looking forward to solve these problems. But clearly I understand that if uh, you don't have confidence that you're getting a straight answer from us, uh, our working relationship won't be productive. And Several so of the groups is, that were targeted. Pardon? Several of the groups that were targeted uh, are in, in my district. And many of those groups, in order uh, to try to uh, achieve their status, filled out these uh, questionnaires that went out, that in, in many of them gave names of their donors. Now, in, in uh, previous testimony today, you, you have said that there is no correlation between any of those donors being audited now in the fact that those donors' names were disclosed. Is that correct? That's correct. Those lists no longer exist. The lists no longer exist, but, and you said that if they are, it's a statistical, uh, it's just something that's statistical. But it's less than 100 names that were disclosed. And you've said that there's 1.4 million uh, audits going out this year. So it's, it's difficult to believe that 100 possible donors' names uh, are out there over 1.4 million audits are going on and if any of those people are being audited it's it's difficult to believe that 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 there isn't any correlation there would well, you tell would you disclose to the council of our committee if any of those names of any of the people on those donor lists are being in fact audited uh, I will be happy. I don't actually have authority, and it's appropriate that I don't, to intervene or in, uh, actually investigate any individual audit that's going on, and I think you should be reassured with that. But let me just stress, our audit rate is 1,400,000 audits. 
For people making more than a million dollars a year, your chance of getting an audit letter are 10 percent. So I don't know who those donors are and what their income base is, but I will guarantee you that if there are a million and four audits going out there and some of these people will be uh, uh, upper middle class or uh, higher income earners, uh, somebody in that group is likely to get an audit uh, because it's got not one out of 100 for rich people. It's one out of 10 for people making you know, over a million dollars. It's about uh, 3 percent for everybody between 200,000 and a million dollars. So, uh, you know, it, you, I expect, you know, it, I'm not, I'm in that sort of somewhere in the middle. At some point I'll get an audit letter. It won't be because I'm the IRS commissioner. And in fact, I won't not get one because I'm the IRS commissioner. There's a set of procedures that determine what the allocation and the determination for audits are. So my concern is that people are legitimately going to be in that million four and that if they happen to be very liberal, very conservative, I don't want them thinking I got this letter from the IRS because of who I am in terms of what organization I belong to, who I voted for in the last presidential election, what church I go to or whether I go to church or not. And that's my commitment to uh, the American public. But I will say that I can't commit that no one in a conservative organization that had a was improperly selected for uh, further review is not going to get an audit. I can't give you a, anybody that blanket assurance, and in fact, it would be inappropriate. The fact that whatever your difficulties with the IRS in the past were uh, doesn't mean you're never going to get a legitimate audit. Thank you, sir.